Okay, so <clears throat> um, yeah, I wanted to again emphasize um, the uh, sim simplicity um, when it comes to awakening and, and, and try and make the point that especially with me, with the, the way I talk about things um, tends to be quite complicated <laughs> it seemed quite com complicated, it seemed quite fantastic um, and kind of sensationalised to a degree when perceived from a uh, someone who's listening or has been following and um, to point out that um, you know I, I've noticed that this can easily be turned into a, a story it, it can easily, easily be these experiences can easily be re-identified with and become part of the story of the person or something that happens to the person an experience that's had by the individual as opposed to um, a realisation of just the way things are or a realisation that the person isn't there um, and th this tends to happen very easily and we can become re-identified with thought or we can use the experiences or insights that we have along along the way to reintegrate into and re-identify with the story of the person to turn into a narrative and you can even see you know, I noticed in my earlier videos across a span of time um, <clears throat> you can see me doing this, you can see me kidding myself on uh, in a sense, you can see me picking up the story, re-identifying with it and um, getting carried away with analysing the experience um, whereas I think that kind of sends the wrong message and it's, it's not about that um, I could sum awakening up by saying something like It's gonna ask, being curious, asking the question, what is, what is this? What's going on here? And then coming to the conclusion that who knows, who cares? Everything's all right. <laughs> it's, let's just enjoy ourselves. Let's just enjoy the experience. Let's just be um, at peace. Because this trap is very easy to fall into and that's the analysis trap or the the subject trap um, analyzing these experiences when they become experiences when we analyze them from the point of view of a separate self or a subject um, <clears throat> whereas without the subject without the perceiver there's there's no experience there um, I know we talk about direct experience all the time, but that's what us translating that through the point of view of the person for the sake of convenience and communicating a, a certain point uh, or a pointing. It can be summed, summed up very simply, just observing what is here without the observer, or just so I, I, <clears throat> a good a good um experiment would be to, if anyone knows the British um, mentalist Derren Brown um, he said in one of his explanations um, if I say to you, don't think of a black cat then what pops into your head, maybe an image of a black cat uh, vague as it may be, maybe the words black cat in letters um, maybe a cat that's not black you know we've got these that, that's a projection in the part of the the, the one that's hearing um, it's automatic and that's, that's what I mean when I talk about perceptual filters whereas if we were to pay direct attention to the 
sensory experience, let's say, for now. Um, if I say, don't think of a black cat, instead of having that mental projection, just hear the sounds. The sounds with no meaning, just the sounds as they are, without that quick connection that we make in the head or in the mind, let's say. Um, like that for everything. And just just the appearances. Um, and it's difficult to talk uh, about this without referencing the person or the subject or the, the center point, but the, the appearances that are, are here. Um, being that, being here, without the labels, without those, that, that projection, because we project our mind out onto the environment, and we have all these structures, all these, like the black cat thing, and um, that's a projection. So if you heard me saying that, and you had an image or whatever of a black cat in your head, you've projected the mind out onto this sensory experience and tried to interpret it, and that's, that's just what we do, that's how we've been, um, that's how we've learned to make sense of this world, but we're kind of seeing through that and seeing this world for what it is. So, for example, when when I so I I'm in a car park now, I can see people walking by, and you know, the projection would be: this is I am a person here in this environment. That is a person there in that environment, separate from it, moving through it, separate from me. Um, whereas when we actually see what's there, let's say, um, we don't really see a separate person, we see the illusion of a separate person, but the person, these entities, let's say, emerge from and as part of the background of the environment, the world, emerge from as part of the world, um, are the world um, they are the universe, <laughs> and there's no real separation there. And it becomes that seem, it might seem ridiculous, but it becomes so obvious. It becomes so obvious, and everything here exists simultaneously as one, simultaneously um, interdependent. Um, everything depends on everything else. Let's say, meaning it's all one. Um, and everything's, there's nothing out of place, there's nothing wrong, it's all perfect. Um, we begin to see more clearly this way, and it becomes clear that that's, that's the way it is, because that's what's there. Not a separate person moving through a separate environment. Um, a three-dimensional entity moving in a three-dimensional world, but the illusion of a three-dimensional entity emerging from the world as an illusion, as part of it. Um, and eventually the illusion is completely seen through, it all flattens out and then it's just one thing. Um, and then describing it as one thing doesn't um, quite uh, isn't quite relevant anymore. What would it be like to, uh, to let's say, observe this world without, if we had, say we had amnesia or something and all of our interpretations or projections or learned ideas about making sense of the world wiped clean and it was completely fresh, we had disassociated from this accumulation of labels and interpretations and we could freely um, experience the world without any of this as fresh, brand new, completely blank slate. Um, awakening uh, is comparable to that. And then we might have the sense that I'm here, I'm in the head. This is where my consciousness lives in the head. 
and I perceive an external world out there. But is, is that actually what we are experiencing? Is that actually what's appearing? Yeah, if you look in the mirror, if you look at yourself and you think, can you see your thoughts? What link is there between this individual entity that, we, that appears before us in the, in the mirror, let's say, and the, the narrative, the ideas, the thoughts that are appearing in the head? Which one is more real? Is this entity us? Is it ours? Does it belong to us? Does this appearance belong to us? Is there a separation between the perceived and that center point? See behind the eyes and the head and the brain that, that perceives it? Is it all appearing simultaneously as one? So I've just made that sound really complicated, but that's just the limit of language. The language is designed to explain com complex, ever more complex um, theories and concepts, but that's not what this is about. It's just about experiencing what's there, just being curious and dropping these or seeing clearly, seeing through the, these labels and perceptions and seeing that they, they don't need to be there in order to function. Um, in fact, they, they end up creating a lot of problems. All that's really required is to be curious about, authentically curious about, what's going on and then to realize that that question has no answer other than what's going on it doesn't have a, a logical conclusion in the mind and realize that no one knows and that's the beauty of it um, to let that seeking go and just experience for the sake of experiencing until the experiencer dissolves as well I was going to do more more videos on the uh, tricks of the ego um, to try and highlight ways in which the ego re-solidifies itself but I really, it's just all the, it's all the same thing uh, I don't want to continue and make it sound more complicated than it is because it's all the one same mechanism um, it really is very simple in reality and it just becomes more and more simple. Um, the more we let go, the less there is to complicate things, if that makes sense. Um, yeah. Anyway, I'm running out of time so that'll do for now and I'll talk to you later.